Hi, my name is Drew Lada. I'm an aerospace engineer at LSAS Tech, and today I'm going to be talking about how to model line of sight constraints in SDK, whether due to your 3D terrain or due to an object blocking your line of sight. To model this, I have created a facility object and placed it right on the edge of the mountains in Boulder, Colorado. This facility has two child objects. They are simple conic sensors with a 90 degree field of view. We're going to be using SDK's terrain server for our analysis. If we click our um, scenario object, right click and click properties and go to terrain, we can see that our terrain server is enabled. That is where we're getting all of these mountain pictures streamed from. There are three options or tools available in SDK for modeling line of sight constraints. Two of them we can see right here, the line of sight terrain mask and the azimuth elevation mask. The line of sight terrain mask simply tests from point A to point B and scans for any blockages in the line of sight between those two points. This means that each time you compute an access, you are running calculations for the line of sight terrain mask. On the other hand, the azimuth elevation mask pre-computes the line of sight of your object so that it can be used for analysis later. The third option is the AZEL mask tool, which is similar to the azimuth elevation mask, except it is used for objects in your line of sight, such as this facility. To start out, we're going to use the azimuth elevation mask. We can enable this analysis by clicking this checkbox and clicking apply. We can click OK to exit our scenario properties. And then to use this analysis, we select the facility that we are trying to constrain the line of sight of, right click and go to properties, basic as L mask. And for use, we're going to say terrain data. We're going to save the mask data in binary, which just means that the terrain data is going to be saved or the mask data is going to be saved in a smaller file. And we're going to use this mask for access constraint. We're going to consider 50 kilometers as the max range because all of our mountains are very close to us. Typically, you will never need to compute a longer max range than 160 kilometers due to the um, roundness of the earth. But depending on the specific circumstance of your analysis, you can change this max range. When we select apply, it's going to compute the as L mask and you can see that it's computing at the bottom and it is almost done. When it finishes, it's going to save a as L mask file to our scenario folder. Now facility one, has its line of sight constrained by this terrain. If we go to constraints basic, we can see that as L mask is being used. That's what happens when we select use mask for access constraints. So in order to use this constraint on our attached sensor, we go to our sensor properties, right click properties and go to constraints basic. Now we simply click as L mask use and our sensor will now use the same as L mask that its facility has. To visualize this, we go to 2D graphics, projection, and for field of view, we select use constraints and we select as L mask. When we hit apply, we will see that our sensor's field of view is now constrained. You can also see this in a farther away view on the bottom right. So now our sensors field of view is constrained due to terrain. Let's test this out. We have an aircraft facility or an aircraft object that is in the far field of view and it's going to fly past the mountains. In order to see whether we have line of sight, we use the access tool and we go from our as L mask sensor, which we computed our as L mask for, so we select access for facility one as L mask, and we're computing it for the aircraft, which is the target object. When we hit compute, we will see a green line show up between our facility and our aircraft. That means that we have access. There are also reports that you can use to look at when you have access and when you don't.
but we're just going to look through the 3D graphics menu. So if we play the animation, we see the aircraft passes just beyond the mountains and we lose our access. It briefly passes through the mountains and in and out, and you can see all of that with our access. What SDK is doing is it's just deciding whether our aircraft is in our pre-computed field of view of our facility or not. Because we're computing the Azel mask in all directions for our facility, this data is going to be a little bit interpolated. You can see a little gap where the terrain is not blocked out here. And in the far range, there are also some pieces that are um, a little bit inaccurate. So the Azel mask tool is a little bit inaccurate, but because we get all of our computations out of the way at the start of our scenario, whenever we create a new access, we can very easily get it computed without taking any additional time. The other option is the terrain mask. So we're going to go to our scenario properties, terrain, and we're going to enable line of sight terrain mask, which is the other option. When we hit apply, now we are able to use the terrain mask. And we're going to do that on our other sensor so we can compare the two. If we go to our sensor object, we don't need to configure a mask for our facility in this case. We can just configure our terrain mask just for the sensor. So we don't have to do anything with our facility. We just go to our sensor object, select properties, constraints, basic, terrain mask, use, and select apply. And now whenever our sensor computes a line of sight between any objects, every time that access is computed, um, SDK will compute line of sight for all of the time periods of the scenario and find if the line of sight is blocked in those individual situations. So if we select access for our terrain mask facility or our terrain mask sensor, so access for this object to the aircraft, and we select compute, now it's going to compute lines of sight on terrain. So as I said earlier, the line of sight terrain mask will compute every time you do an access, whereas the azimuth elevation mask gets all of your computation done out of the way at the start of your scenario. That's why the Azel mask, um, the first thing that we went through is usually better because whenever you change the properties of your scenario, you move objects around, SDK will need to recompute all of the accesses that you're asking it to compute. Now that our access is computed, we will be able to go to the start of our scenario and see we have line of sight. And as the aircraft passes through the mountains, the line of sight flickers in and out. Once again, the line of sight terrain mask is slightly more accurate than the as L mask, but again, it is a little bit slower. Now there is the third option for constraining line of sight, which is the as L mask tool. So if we look at our original as L mask, it is not constrained by the facility that is right over here. If we want to consider the blockage of the facility, we can use the as L mask tool on our sensor. So our first Azel mask that we computed with the terrain was for the facility. So our facility has an as L mask file constraining its line of sight, but the sensor doesn't have any file constraining its line of sight. So we can now create a mask file for the sensor on top of the mask file for the facility and consider both in our analysis. To create an as L mask file for the sensor that considers the, um, 3D objects in our scenario, we go to the sensor that we want to constrain. We right click and go to sensor as L mask. When we select this, it'll open the as L mask tool, which uses again, 3D objects rather than um, terrain. So we want to consider facility two as an obscuring object. We're also going to increase the window dimension to 800 and hit apply. This just means that we're going to have a higher resolution mask file. 
And lastly, we're going to select compute. This output file is going to be saved as as l mask dot bit um, body mask. When we select compute, it'll tell us where, or it'll ask us where to save our file. We tell it where to save our file, and you can see it's just running through all of the lines of sight of the sensor and determining um, where it is constrained. Now that it's done running, we can close out of. Oh, is it done? Yeah, we can close out of it. Go to our sensors properties, sensor as all mask, and we can select the mask file that we just generated. So mask file, as all mask dot bit mask or a body mask, use mask for access constraint and apply. So now the blockage of this facility is considered, but we don't see it because we need to go to 2D graphics projection and select sensor as all mask. In order to select more than one um, object in the field of view constraints, we shift click. So shift click as all mask and then shift click sensor as all mask. And now both are selected. When we hit apply, now our facility is constrained from the blockages of this object very accurately. So if you will have sensors that are in your ground station that are constrained by terrain in the near area, and or if you have a 3D model of your ground station and nearby objects, you can constrain all of this in your SDK scenario using the tools I have discussed. Now that we've done our analysis, let's compare the two forms of analysis. To do this, let's create an access report for each of the sensors, starting with the terrain mask sensor. So we've already computed our access, so we just go to reports, access, and we have a detailed report of the exact time where we gain and lose line of sight to the objects. Next, let's create the same um, report for our other sensor, the Azel mask sensor. And we create an access report. And if we look at the two reports, we will see that the start and stop times are slightly different because we're using slightly different methods of line of sight determination. The line of sight terrain mask is going to be slightly more accurate. However, because it needs to be recomputed for every single object that you're calculating line of sight to, whereas our azimuth elevation mask is pre-computed and can instantly know whether you have line of sight to any object in your scenario, the azimuth elevation mask is still typically preferable. However, for moving objects, you can't pre-compute line of sight. So if you have a ground vehicle and another ground vehicle or an aircraft, you will not be able to use azimuth elevation mask and thus you will have to use the line of sight terrain mask for your terrain analysis. So for two moving objects, you will use the line of sight terrain mask. And for most other situations involving ground-based analysis, you're going to want to use azimuth elevation mask. We have a knowledge article that accompanies this video, as well as a wide range of knowledge articles on STK, ODTK, or other AGI software topics. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day.